giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. There we go. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Hey, Skystone's been released. Amazing FTC game uh, chat. We can't wait to hear what you think about it in there as well. We have uh, on here, University of Nevada, Reno's been uh, streaming uh, for, well, they're going to be streaming for 27 and a half hours. You guys started just a few hours ago. We're going to be talking to them about uh, some of the really uh, cool things they've been discovering with this game. And don't forget, if you got questions, put them in chat. It helps if you do at first updates now, but we'll try to grab any of them that you can as well. We do have some uh, uh, awesome giveaway, by the way, from our friends at GoBuilda.com. Um, which you can see right there on screen because I forgot to change the audio on it. Uh, but the Mechanum, the Mechanum Rollers, 36 pack of those that you can make your own colors uh, for them as well. So super cool. Can't wait to uh, uh, give away more of those. And uh, we have one for today and one for tomorrow as well. I'm going to bring those back up on screen uh, so we can take a look there. Uh, so go build a uh, just released these recently. If you didn't get an opportunity to check these out, uh, you can dye your own Mechanum wheels. Uh, tag them on Instagram, by the way, if you end up doing this. I want to see the coolest Mechanum wheels out there uh, for just different dyes, different colors, what you guys can do. So if you're interested in winning this a little bit later on during the show, there's going to be a keyword for you to type in the chat as many times as you want. You only get one entry, uh, but that will be your opportunity to win. Don't forget, you do have to make sure you click that little purple follow button near the top or whatever color it is. Make sure you're following first updates now to get the latest updates and keep us loud, live, and independent if you're interested with the uh, subscription through Twitch Prime or for just a few bucks a month. And guess what? Through the uh, end of September or near the end of September, uh, Tier 1 subs are now half price right now. So if we thank you for your support. And can we talk more uh, with University of Nevada, Reno? So why don't we go uh, here from right to left and introduce yourselves uh, and who you are and uh, uh, which team you're on. Because we actually have two build teams here at University of Nevada, Reno. Yeah, hi, I'm Jamie Poston. I am the captain of Team 1337, um, <laughs> which is a team member we came up with ourselves. But I'm a graduate student at the University of Nevada, Reno, studying computer science and engineering. Hi, my name is Kaylor Miley. I'm also on Team 1337, and I'm also a master's student studying computer science at UNR. Hi, I'm Derek. I'm on Team 0775, and I am a senior in computer science at the University of Nevada, Reno. Hi, I'm Price Poston. This is my uh, sister, Jamie. And I'm on team, the team captain of team 0775. So we have a little bit of sibling rivalry going here, apparently, uh, between the two to see who's going to uh, build the uh, better robot. Uh, but tomorrow, uh, you'll actually get to see, once these robots are completed, we're actually, uh, they're going to be competing as an alliance together uh, to see what their maximum point score can be. Uh, so let's talk about Skystone a little bit, uh, what's going on uh, with them. Then we're going to jump into a bit uh, about their progress already. We already have a driving the robot, so we'll definitely show that off. But uh, let's give a little bit of impressions about Skystone, and we'll just kind of go, uh, once again, uh, starting with you, Jamie, and we'll move the way down. Give me about 15, 30 seconds what you're thinking about Skystone this year? Um, so immediately, uh, the thing that really caught my attention was that there's uh, red and blue zones on opposite sides of the field, so that um, it really kind of, for me, encourages defense, and I'm really looking forward to that. I don't think we'll be able to show that uh, for the UNR versus UNLV build challenge right now, just because we don't have an opposing alliance, but that's what I'm most excited about. One of the things that struck me was the impressive CV challenges that are out there for trying to actually move the correct blocks during the autonomous mode. When you only have 30 seconds to move the correct blocks to where to whichever side of the field you want to go to, it's going to be pretty difficult to do that with only 30 seconds. So it's going to be pretty code heavy, I think, if you want to actually try and gain points during the autonomous mode. Yeah, I'm with Kaylor on that. The autonomous mode, there is a lot of um, like strategy involved in determining what you want to do, uh, where you want to push the foundation. And 
then throughout like there's strategy involved with how you want to stack if you want to go for a higher stack or risk it uh, when pushing it out. Yeah, I'm with uh, Jamie on this one. I like the defense aspect of the game, so I'm glad there's a lot of opportunity for defense in this game. And I'm, it also seems cool that uh, in Endgame, if you want an extra 15 points, you can risk losing all your points by pushing your foundation out of your little zone. So let's talk about we have uh, two teams here today. Uh, by the way, do we have team names or anything out there? We just team A, team B. What's going on with that? We have team numbers. Oh, it's team numbers. Team okay. We don't super have team names, but what I was thinking was um, for the difference between UNR and UNLV, we could be the Empire and UNLV is the Rebels because that's their mascot. So yeah. go so, Empire. So we're hoping to have UNLV on hopefully tomorrow to check out more about their bot, but they're also doing a, a build as well too. And we know that other teams are doing builds uh, around the country and around the world as well too. So by the way, if you are a uh, team that's uh, doing a quick build, feel free to uh, shoot us a message in our Discord. Let us know what's going on. Uh, we'd love to actually show off some of your things as well too. We'll show them here on air. So join our Discord and uh, check that out as well. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the challenge here. Uh, so in the 27 and a half hours, by the time this needs to get done, uh, uh, but by the way, I'm not going to remember the team numbers, but we'll go, uh, Jamie, with your your team here. Uh, what are you hoping to We're accomplish? We're the grad students, and they're the undergrads. Okay, grad and undergrads so there. All right, grad and undergrads. So grads, uh, as you're looking at this build challenge here, what are you hoping to accomplish? Like by the time the challenge gets over, uh, are you going to have a fully uh, working robot? You're going to get a million color or a million different points. And by the way, chat, uh, there is no giveaway yet. It's going to be happening later. So those typing go color, uh, good attempt, and go build. appreciates your branding for them, but it has not started yet. But uh, by the time the challenge gets over, what are you hoping to accomplish? Um, what I was really hoping to do for this challenge, even before the game was revealed, was really get into OpenCV, which is uh, using the computer vision aspect a lot more, because that's what a lot of the grad students have. That's the experience that a lot of grad students have, and I'd really like to show that to uh, first teams. Um, so in particular, I'd like to, with Autonomous, my goal is to get the Sky Stones delivered over. And we still are having trouble with building the robot right now, but I think that's an achievable goal. So... Yeah. And how about our undergrad team? <laughs> our goal with this is once we found out that we have an alliance partner, we strategize with them. And what they're going to do during teleop is they're going to bring us blocks and we will stack them. All right. Fair enough. So, so, you're, so it's going to be a tandem thing, right? It's going to be actually you're, you're trying to actually work together. It's not going to be which robots necessarily better. It's which how many points can you accomplish together? Is that right? Right. We're just trying to score more points than UNLV is. Okay, fair fair enough on that. So uh, let's talk about some of the things you've done so far, and we'll bring up some of the videos uh, that you have here too. But uh, when you started out the challenge, obviously we want to educate people, right, and show you what the possibilities are for things. So let's talk about uh, the field a little bit. You guys are standing on a fully assembled field right now. Uh, what have you noticed about the field? Let's talk about uh, the uh, stones and different aspects of it. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, field going on here. Well, the field has a lot of stones. A really cool aspect this year is that there is a player, yeah, human a, a human player on the field who can put a block into the zone. So yeah, that's very unique this year. So can you describe a bit more about the attributes of the field? Let's talk about some different uh, game pieces and um, what the field looks like maybe compared to other years and what people can expect from that. Sure, one of the main aspects that caught my eye really initially was the bridge. Uh, especially because you cannot step over the bridge without incurring a penalty. That's just for safety, but it was kind of neat that um, they're, they're encouraging safety that much. Um, also, the smaller alliance bridges on the side, their max height is 14 inches. So if you have a robot that would like to go and deliver blocks, uh, stones underneath the bridge, you're, you're going to be height limited which I think is pretty interesting, um, especially something you have to consider for your strategy and possible alliance partners. Yeah. So how about you guys? Anything else in regards to the field that's really stuck out to you this year? Uh, or let's talk about in regards to the stones themselves. I know you guys tried tipping those uh, a little bit earlier. How was that uh, reaction and engagement? I, I think the stones tipping is going to be really interesting because you can get a lot of points if you stack the stones, but it's kind of a double-edged sword. If you The more stones you stack, the, the more difficult it can be to actually keep those points because you don't want them to just fall over. 
And the the stacking of the stones actually is significantly less points than during the end game portion and the autonomous portion. So we're trying to demonstrate as much as we can how you can get points quickly and then work on stacking the stones afterward to optimize your point total. Well, let's talk about what is an optimal point total like, you know, when you look at something like that, what is actually realistic for a team to accomplish in a match? Um, I don't know if we like went over the specifics of point totals in the match, but I'd expect that um, your goals really should be delivering the sky stones underneath the uh, Alliance sky bridge and at least parking in the end zone during end game. Now stacking, um, I know during worlds, like at the end of the season, we're going to have stacks of huge, huge heights, mm -hmm. but really, we really want to focus on the more um, uh, uh, programmable, uh, software aspects um so cv or computer vision is really what we're going to focus on for the sky stones to get those in, in autonomous but um otherwise we're going to see how well we can communicate with our uh undergrad team to push the stones into position for them to stack them so can we take a look at the foundation there do you mind like how heavy is it uh let's pick that up a little bit and, and take a look what that's like Sure. Um, one thing that was striking about that foundation was that it slides pretty easily, but there are no wheels on the underside. Can you flip that? So there's no wheels. It just slides uh, flat on the on the foam, on the foam um, which is kind of interesting as in previous years, um, Price can speak more to this, but there was a uh, tube kind of assembly that you had to put um, wiffle balls into. I don't remember what game that was. Was that stack it up? Well, at any rate, um, it was uh, little tube towers that had wheels on the bottom. And those wheels kind of set the uh, center of gravity higher so they were more easily able to be tipped over. But here, this is a foundation. It's really, really stable. Um, Cascade Effect. Cascade Effect was the game. Um, but yeah, so the foundation is stable. It's, it's not going to move. Really, the only thing that is going to move are the blocks on top of the foundation. Something that's also kind of interesting is it's really, really light because it's made of mostly hollow plastic. So it's pretty easy to move. You don't actually have to require that. Like the robot doesn't have to be able to have that much torque to be able to move it into the correct zones. Well, as a follow-up to that, Adam in chat just asked, uh, have you calculated the coefficient of friction for the platform at all? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have, no. Um, I think that would kind of depend on the material of the foam itself. Um, I, I, I think that would be interesting to do, but I don't know how helpful it would be. He might have something in mind already. The calculation is small. The calculation we made is we, we did some calculations and we determined the friction is small. It's small. Very scientific. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah, so. best scientific guess. It's, it's uh, very small. Very small. <laughs> Very cool. And, and you guys, like you said, just like Adam uh, posted on there, if you got any questions, uh, we'll just ask him as we go through here uh, for our team. One thing I want to uh, jump into and, and talk a little bit more in regards to the uh, blocks uh, is that uh, you guys had a uh, kind of an initial idea for grabbing the blocks. Can we talk about that a little bit more? And we'll show that on screen. Yeah, so the way that we're going to try and grab the blocks, um, Price will explain it more once he gr gets it, but before we grab the blocks, we're going to try and move them, and that's basically just going to use a pushing mechanism, and we're going to grab the blocks similar to what he's showing on the screen. Um, and the idea is to have a solid piece and a wheel that pick up the block and move it, essentially similar to a conveyor belt. And what, what made you choose that, and have you explored any other options at all? So we haven't explored too many options, but the reason we chose it is because we think it's easy to implement in our 27 hours. So if we just clamp on, it should just be a one direction motor that we'll be able to clamp on. And as long as the surface is sticky enough and we have enough torque, we'll be able to pick up a block. So when you're looking at, uh, at that, so the undergrad team, you're looking at picking up blocks is our, is our, uh, our graduate team. Uh, are you looking at manipulating game pieces differently or what are the thought processes on that? So really, um, our job is kind of to get the blocks into position for the undergrad to handle them and, and stack them. Um, we were thinking of kind of shoveling the blocks um, into position. Um, so I think you're the what what's showing right now is the initial test of the teleop, but um, we kind of uh, 
test it around with just with our basic chassis we can fit the block easily in between the front two wheels um, without any it doesn't grip on the fo uh, foam at all so that's really nice that it can slide easily um, yeah there we go so that's a little bit of um, shoveling action we're just going to try to rely on speed in that case i think um, because what we like is a smaller robot that can quickly 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 get blocks into the right position for the undergrad team uh, so a couple of questions from chat. Uh, VCH Posting wants to know if you plan on doing any lifting uh, at all in this. Yeah, um, the undergrad team is going to kind of focus on that. So, yes. So, being you know the probably the better team, we're the undergrads. Uh, we're going to clamp on and then lift with a linear slide. So our linear slide is also going to be dual purpose. We're going to use it first to go down and clamp onto the foundation, so we can manipulate the foundation on the field. And during teleop, we're going to be able to clamp onto a block, then lift it up. We're going to see how high we can go. Hopefully, we can get up there. Maybe then it's not worth it to move out the foundation out of the corner in endgame. So hopefully, we get to that point. How about a couple other strategies? Is there anything else that you're looking to accomplish uh, if, like in the match that you're saying, like, hey, this is specifically what we want to get done uh, by the time we're done building? I think... At least in Teleop, most of our plan is just to push blocks and stack them. And, yep. I don't know if we're going to have time for this today, but one strategy I thought was pretty interesting was instead of um, building the tower from the top, like continually placing blocks on the top, you could build it from the bottom. Um, can you grab that stack for me really quick? Because if you build it from the bottom, potentially you have an unlimited amount of top space in order to get the tower higher. So you have a tower right here, right? If you, instead of placing it on the top, if you lift from the bottom, and do that very carefully because the tower is very wiggly, um, in a controlled manner with your robot, you might be able to just increase your height like pretty quickly without having to reach on top and have all that mechanism for reaching on top. I don't think we'll be able to do that right now, but say again? So the the strategy would be sound, but you cannot manipulate more than one block at a time. So that would incur a major penalty. Oh, okay, yes. Well, price is on the rules here, so that's fair. Well, there's people saying in chat, uh, Roboteer5291 says not a penalty because it's in the foundation. So I'm not sure uh, what the rules clarification on that, but I'm sure that's something that our, uh, our team over there could probably look up and uh, get back to you on our chat. Always... Uh, uh, let us know as well, too, on what you think. Of course, anything that we say uh, on stream, we, need, we do really need to point this out, by the way. Anything that we say on stream is not official, uh, so make sure that you go and uh, check the right sources for that. Obviously, read the manual, and then when the QA opens up uh, in a couple weeks, uh, where's that open up next week, I think, right? Uh, then go check there as well, too. So always keep in mind what we do is not official here, uh, and we don't claim that as well. So a uh, question from Agent New 27 says, uh, what are you planning uh, for setting the block down and making sure that it can pl that it can place down at the correct position effectively? Do you want to grab this? You got it. So with our grabbing mechanism, we should be able to grab the block in a solid point in relation to our robot. So when we grab it and then raise it, we should be able to then orientate our robot in order to get a good spot. And once we're satisfied with the spot we're in, we can then lower it and then release the block. So we're not really relying on some mechanism to line up for us. We're going to be controlling the lining up. Very cool. All right, before we go any further, guys, we're going to start our giveaway for this evening for, once again, our friends at Go Builda for the Mechanic Wheel Roller 36-pack. Uh, and you know what, chat? You guys did such a good job. We'll make that the keyword for today. Why not? Go Color is going to be the uh, keyword. So type in Go Color in chat. That's your opportunity. You do have to type it starting now. It didn't count from before, but good effort from everybody. Um, Go Color is the keyword for that. Please make sure you do hit that follow button if you want to be eligible to win. And if you want five times luck, like a few others have today, five times luck, leave us a subscription. Help us keep fun, loud, live, and independent. Don't forget that Tier 1 subs are half off right now, and you might have a free subscription if you or your parents have Amazon Prime through Twitch Prime. So Go Color will draw for that in just a few minutes. Good luck, everybody. And make sure you take at first updates now with any questions you might have. Uh, looking at a couple uh, other things in the game. So uh, right now, I guess, what, where are you at right now um, in your build process? And then it's going to be a long night. Are you planning on doing uh, a full overnight stream? And what do you hope to accomplish by morning? So currently, the undergrad team, and I believe the grad team is the same, is that we just finished basically our chassis. 
and manage to load a program onto the robot. So our robot moves with four wheels. Uh, after that, not so much yet. And then personally, I will not be staying all night. I need to get some sleep for my sleep schedule. But I will let you guys talk about that. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much our plan. I'm also not going to be staying all night, but if by tonight I can get some of the autonomous programs starting to work on it, and then we can start seeing it work in that section, as well as being able to be driven, that would be our goal. I think as well on the grad side, if if you see us streaming overnight, it means that we've probably had some sort of problem and, <laughs> and things aren't going well and we need to debug stuff. But I think that we're on schedule right now to be able to have no problems with our autonomous mode. Um, we've also had someone in parallel trying to work on doing the computer vision aspects of what we need to do so that someone was building the chassis while someone was also working on the initial programming. And that way it wouldn't we wouldn't hopefully have to spend all night. Can you talk about yeah. the uh, programming as well too a little bit more? I'm sorry, go ahead, Fish, what you're going to do and let's talk about programming a little bit sure um i know some team members were thinking about staying all night but a lot of people also want to sleep um i guess college students even though the, the the uh stereotype is that we don't sleep uh some of us do um about the programming right now um we have one expert kind of going over uh open cv um he actually works in a computer vision lab so he's going to be um, kind of looking over uh, com the computer vision, the open CV package for computer vision to see what we can do there. Um, we already have some ideas for um, kind of detecting the difference between the sky stones. So uh, you, you kind of um, crop the screen to the sky stone block because we'll already know where we are based on where we position the robot before autonomous and then just uh, look in the main part of the stone and see if it's black or not. Um, that was, we're mostly at the idea stage still right now, but um, uh, for other programming, we kind of have a basic tele -up program started up or up already, um, but, and we're able, we are able now to load programs onto the robot. Um, one thing to clarify too, uh, only like four of our members are actually FTC and FIRST alumni. Everybody else, this is entirely new to them. So um, it's a learning experience for us, and I hope that's still something inspiring for first teams, especially rookie teams. So, yeah. As well, I guess to speak about some of the CV that we're doing, our initial plan, if you have any experience with CV, is to try and look at these blocks, and you can see that there's this block has a black has black tape over it, and the other sky stones are entirely yellow. So we're gonna filter based on black and yellow and then look for the peaks in the black to try and figure out where these blocks, these sky stones are specifically. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Wiz Khalifa would definitely be proud for that as well too. So uh, looking at uh, some of the other aspects on here. Uh, so you guys have a Tetrix drive base, um, which I know a lot of people in chat were asking about that at some point. Um, Why did you decide to go Tetrix and then uh, the base itself? Are you planning on keeping that drive base configuration? Um, we may change the drive base configuration depending on how it works for us. Um, I'm not afraid to rebuild the robot. Um, we should be able to do that pretty quickly, even though it's kind of scary to do. Like we don't, we haven't worked all season on one uh, chassis, so uh, maybe we're more apt to do that than a team further in the season. But as for the Tetrix uh, base, um, we wanted to keep this. Con uh, competition kind of more consistent. So both the undergrad grad teams have Tetrix kits that will start from building as well as the two UNLV teams. That kind of keeps things consistent. So we have the same uh, base set of parts. So really it's showing what we can do in 27 hours. All right, a couple of questions from chat, and then we're going to wrap up uh, with our team here. Of course, draw for that uh, Go Build a Giveaway, so make sure you get Go Color in. Uh, not case sensitive, by the way, so you can type it uh, whatever you, way you want. Uh, Polywalk4 asks if you're using a rev color sensor on the robots at all. Um, we were not really planning on it. Um, most of our work is going to be through computer vision, which doesn't need a color sensor in it because, I mean, did you want to? Yeah, so we, the color sensor, I think, would be a good way to go. But since we wanted to do more than just find the colors, we wanted to be able to orient ourselves within the arena and their pictures around the walls of the arena, we're actually going to use the phone's camera. 
And essentially, you can think of the camera as a better color sensor, something that can do a lot more colors than what the color sensor can do. But I think if you were trying to do this as well, the color sensor should definitely be integrated in terms of trying to figure out even foundations or what the blocks can be if you're not comfortable with computer vision. All right, it's Sean 45 asks, uh, what did you, uh, did you guys think about using the Vuforia to find the sky stones? And what is Vuforia, if any of you know that? Uh, I'm not aware of what Vuforia is. Anybody? All right, so Sean, maybe some more clarification, but I'm going to guess no, they did not think about using that uh, <laughs> for this as well, too. So, uh, and I know Envy Runner asked uh, in chat as well what that is. So, if Sean, if you see that uh, response, would be great. Uh, Xander Freemaker, uh, do you have any uh, tutorials for image recognition or any good sites to go to for image recognition? I'm not thinking of any right now, um, but that's one of the things that we we're going to look up uh, in our, like, looking through the OpenCV tutorials, the Open Computer, computer Vision tutorials. Um, so if we find them, we can post them in chat for you. Um, I don't know if you'll be watching uh, later on, but, um, yeah, not off the top of my head, no. All right. We're specifically looking at the, the OpenCV library, just like Jamie said, and either going to be programming in Python or Java. And the nice thing with the OpenCV library is it's extensible to both languages. So you can write both, and it will do functionally the same thing. Uh, just a follow-up, as Sean 45 says, uh, Vuforia is a built-in library for the FTC SDK that has been used by FTC teams since 2016. I highly recommend taking a look at it. It's done a great job finding very detailed pictures. Now, awesome. Thanks Thanks for the for the help. We might, we'll definitely try that out. So very cool. So V4, you guys, go check that out. Uh, see what you think for that as well. Uh, so as we uh, start to wrap up here, uh, first, how late are we actually going to go to tonight then? If we're not doing all nighter, how late are we planning? I'm thinking uh, the latest would be like 10 p.m. Um, Pacific I'm, time. I'm still super gung ho, so we'll still have to talk about that, and we'll probably announce it to stream. <laughs> um, right. But yeah, I'm I've got uh, a couple cases of energy drinks over there, so I'm set to go. Uh, but yeah, 10, 9 or 10 p.m. Um, I think sounds like the max. Okay. Um, that at least the undergraduate team wants to go. Fair enough. And that's Pacific time, by the way. So uh, if you're on Eastern time, then that's uh, about one in the morning. So plenty of stuff that keep going uh, through here, potentially later as well. So before we uh, uh, we're going to wrap up here and do that drawing for the go, uh, <laughs> go build a giveaway just a little bit. I like VCH post says go Red Bull. I like it. Uh, what is the energy drink of choice, by the way, here? That would be a uh, sugar free monster. Uh, I like uh, Game Fuel. Game Fuel, all right. I'll get my get my check with Doctor Disrespect. We'll be on a little bit later, so perfect. So, oh. uh, I'm a I I just prefer coffee. Coffee is good. There's a Starbucks around the corner, so that's pretty helpful. They close at 9 p.m. though, so that might literally be our limit. <laughs> uh, Xander Freemaker asks, uh, Are you using the navigation targets? Yes, definitely. Um, we were hoping to do some sort of localization with the n navigation targets. Um, I don't think a lot of teams do that as far as I know, but I would like to kind of try to sh uh, try that out and maybe show that to teams as well. Um, a lot, uh, a couple of our team members are robotics students, so we should be able to do uh, localization based on that. Very cool. Uh, VCH Poston, just to let you know, and thank you for the nice segue here. Uh, this is all recorded, by the way, uh, as a Twitch partner, everything goes on uh, video on demand here on Twitch, as well as we're putting on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash first updates now, as well as some of the other videos we were showing uh, in between. Some of those B-rolls, uh, we'll be uploading those uh, to our YouTube page, uh, so make sure you check that out. Of course, you can also find Fun FTC on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well, too, uh, so make sure you give uh, those a shot. Uh, last question here, then we're going to wrap up and then draw for the giveaway way uh how do you sense the complex images uh as sander so we are kind of kind of do we're, we're going to use uh oh, oh the open cd open computer vision package for that um and we're still not super sure like what exact function or how we're going to do that but we're going to use the camera on the robot to kind of sense those images and particularly on the blue side, because UNR, uh, University of Nevada, Reno, we're the blue team, uh, and UNLV is the red team. On the blue side, one of the particular pictures has a wash of color that's really starkly different from the others. Um, I'll have to try to record a video of that and post it to stream or post it, uh, maybe show it in the next daily updates. But it's a wash of like 
pink and orange, which might be helpful for us to um, just to localize for our autonomous to get under the sky bridge. That was a little bit longer answer than you needed, but um, right now we don't super know, but we're still looking at that at uh, o the OpenCV package. All right, let's do our uh, giveaway here uh, from Go Build It. Once again, the Mechanum Wheel Roller Set. Uh, and Go Color was the uh, keyword in that. And by the way, if you win, please make sure you send us your shipping info. That's first name, last name, uh, mailing address, all that fun stuff as well, uh, either to first updates now on uh, Twitch here or through our Discord. Uh, the winner uh, for that is going to be XWOO. The, that person's been a winner before. Congratulations. And a subscriber, so you know what that means. If you're a sub, I want to see lots of rigged emotes in chat because clearly we have rigged it for our subscribers to win. But congratulations uh, for that. And don't forget, we're going to be giving away another one tomorrow as well, too. And what time we what time are we doing that at? The full reveal is going to be at, at uh, 7.30 uh, Eastern, right? Yes, um, that would be 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. Um, that will start our... I guess it's a daily update, but it's kind of the end of the competition. Um, then we will kind of record, um, we'll, we'll show the robot scoring points, compare that to UNLV, um, and kind of see who won there, as well as kind of talk about what we've done with her robots. But yeah, 4.30 p.m. Pacific time or 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And we're going to actually show that, uh, that, that Alliance team up. Is that going to be live on air as well? Uh we're going to work on that. Uh, as far as I know, UNLV does have a webcam, um, but we weren't able to get in contact well, at with least them. Well, at least for you event. guys, we want to try to show that live, right? Yes, yeah. We were hoping to have an overhead view of the field, um, which should look pretty nice on stream. So, yeah. So, very cool. So, make sure you tune in tomorrow at uh, 4.30 p.m. Uh, 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 man, I keep wanting to say specific. Pacific, uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, where we'll see the final product. You'll get to see a full match plate as well, too. So make sure you let everybody know on your team that they want to tune in. And once again, another Go Build It giveaway uh, as well, too. So before we wrap up uh, for today, and, and we'll still keep streaming, guys, so don't leave. Uh, you can ask more questions after uh, the official show is over, so to speak. Uh, any last things you guys want to talk about uh, uh, as you wrap up uh, for this segment here? I think we're about here. Uh we're about good here. Uh, uh, go pack. Was that go Packers? Go, go pack. pack. Wolf pack. We're the wolf pack. Oh, so. man. I'm from Green Bay. I got excited. So, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, so very cool everybody so uh good luck to the build team we're gonna let them get back to work uh we'll leave the stream up here uh as well too so don't forget to keep asking them uh more questions as we go through and check out the archives uh youtube.com forward slash first updates now good luck uh university of nevada reno uh team good luck for the rest of the evening for you thanks tyler thanks for watching if you want more fun content be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos you can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.